Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester 2, Routine Switching Essentials, and this is chapter 7, Routine Dynamically. This is section 7.3, RIP and RIP and G Routine. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to configure RIP routing protocol and configure RIP and G routing protocols. Routine Information Protocol, so why RIP? RIP is rarely used in modern networks. However, it's useful as a foundation for understanding basic network routing. This section will provide a brief overview of how to configure basic RIP settings and to verify RIP version 2. So router RIP configuration mode advertising network. So first to configure uh, RIP or any routing protocol or pretty much any configuration, you need to go to global configuration mode. So you are in privilege mode and type configure terminal config T for short and then you are in global configuration mode from there on you can start with router if you do question mark here the router will display all the routing protocol it supports so if we want to configure router rip uh, or rip so type router rip now you can see that we are in the router configuration mode so we uh, press enter and then we enter the router configuration mode okay after we type router rip and we are on router configuration mode, we start advertising our network, our directly connected network. For example, 192.168.1.0, we advertise in this network that we it's on the left of router one, and the second network is 192.168.2.0, the one on the right. Now, RIP doesn't require any subnet mask or wildcard mask or anything, it just, you add a class full addresses. So 2.0, even though this is classless, we add class full addresses, because by default, RIP is in version 1 and there's no point to there's no way for you to add the class less so it doesn't support classless it's class full routing protocol so to enable RIP and advertise the network using the routing configuration network type commands network network address enter the network address for each directly connected networks entering the command automatically enables RIP on all the interfaces that belong to the specific network Interfaces are both sent and receive RIP updates. Advertises a speci specified network and RIP updates every 30 seconds. Now, for example, we went to the router one, router configuration mode by typing router RIP, and then first command was network 192.168.1.0. So the, we are advertising this network. Router one is going to start sending updates on that link, and it's going to receive any any updates coming on that link as well. And you can see the, the second type command is network 192.168.2.0. Even though it's a, it's a classless, we have submitted this, if we have to enter a class full. So as soon as we enable it in there, it's going to start sending updates and receiving updates on that link as well. So to verify it, show IP protocols. And here we see the routing protocol we're running is RIP. And we see in updates that we send every 30 seconds. We can see how long is the next update in say in 16 seconds. And we can see down here the uh, administrative distance is default, which is 120. And we are getting updates from these sources. Or these are our another routers who are sending updates. RIP doesn't keep neighbors, so it doesn't keep like a neighbor tables, but just says, okay, well, I got an update from 192.168.2.2. And they administrated distance is 120, and I, I heard an update from that source 15 seconds ago. What we are sending updates for, we are advertising network 192.168.1.0, and we are advertising network 192.168.2.0. You can see by default, RIP will send as a version 1 only, so it's enabled as version 1, but it does receive version 1 and version 2. You can enable triggered RIP updates and you can make enable authentication, but this is more advanced or CCMP lessons. So examine default RIP settings, show IP root and uh, pipe here and begin gateway. So we don't want to see the cause. We just want to see the routing table, show IP root. So we can see that we have learned about three networks from router two. Everything is via 192.168.2.2, which is router two's IP address here. We have learned about 192.168.3.0, which is, let me point it, this network here. So we have learned about this network, 192.168.3.0. And as you can see, it's directly connected to router one, sorry, router two. And as router two sent it to us, it's one hop away for us. So one hop away. 
administrative distance is 120 so 192 168 3.0 so this network it's 120 the administrative distance and it's one hop away via router 2's IP address and we learned it 24 seconds ago our exit interface is serial 0 4 slash 0 4 slash 0 and here we can see the calls way we learned it we learned all three routes from rep now the next network 192.168.4.0 is one hop away from us as well because it's directly connected this network here it's um, directly connected to router 2 as well so router 2 is sending us with a zero hops now we add one so 120 administrative distance that's the default sorry and that's one hop away the next is 192.168.5.0 which is this network here now it's not directly connected on router 2 so router 2 is send us he added one hop so it was one hop to router 2 and another hop from router 2 to us so it's two hops away so again if we run show ip protocol we can see that we are sending version 1 but we are receiving version 1 and version 2. notice this is how rip router 1 can send rip version 1 messages we can receive both rip version 1 and rip version 2. rip would uh, r1 would ignore the rip version 2 fields in that root entry so it will ignore anything that comes with the submit mask or anything it doesn't understand enabling rip version 2 so again after you go root a rip the command is version 2 that's how you enable version 2 now i tell my students when you if you configure rip most 100 percent of the time you type root a rip and the next command will be version 2 and i'll tell you one more command that's going to be like automatic don't even think about it and we do show ip protocols now we can see that we are running we are sending in version 2 and we are receiving only version 2. configuring version 1 enables rip version 1 only if you don't go and say no version returns the router to the default settings like sending in version 1 and receiving 1 and 2. but if you say version 1 for example here in router version 1 you just say okay well i'm just going to send and receive version 1 only so disabling auto summarization similarly to rip version 1 rip version 2 automatically will summarize network at the major network boundaries by default so like version 1 rip, rip version 2 will be start behaving like class 4 so it will start summarizing at the class 4 range to modify the default rip version 2 behavior of automatic summarization use a no auto summary router configuration mode this is a, the second command that i was telling you that i tell my students as soon as you enable rip do version 2 to start with and no auto summary you want to disable the automatic summarization because we can make our own automatic we can make our own summary so there what there's no point to leave the router do the summarization and this is very very bad uh, summarization because it's like a classful range summarization this command has no effect when using rip version 1 when automatic summarization has been disabled, RIP version 2 no longer summarizes network to the class full address at the boundary routers. RIP version 2 now includes all subnets and the appropriate mask on its routing updates. The show IP protocol now states that automatic network summarization is not an effect. So if I go back, if, let me just go back here, one second. If I just go here, you can see that by default, if you don't do anything, here, this command here, automatic summary network summarization it says it's n is in effect which means that automatic summarization is on now again if you leave this automatic summarization it's going to summarize networks to the class full boundary so for example if you have 172.16.1 one network 172.16.2 two network 172.16.3 network everything is going to be summarized to 172.16.00 zero, zero. forward slash 16 that's it now that's I could could be okay but uh, most of the time it does create problems so you disable the automatic summarization and you enable it your own summarized you do your own summarization configuring passive interface for example early on we did configure with a rip and we said this network 192.168.1.0 and this network 192.168.2.0 as soon as we enable this network router one is going to start sending updates every 30 seconds there now that could cause a problem or a security risk as well because first of all we are sending updates when there's no any other routers we're not expecting any routers here and uh, there could be a pc there somebody with a with a hacking tools could be trying to get all our, our networks around our company so we do not want to waste the bandwidth 
and for security reason we want to enable this as a passive interface passive interface means that okay well not sending updates through that interface still advertise that interface to all uh, that network to other uh, neighbors or to other interfaces but don't send updates in that area on, on that interface so sending out unneeded updates on a local area network is wasted the bandwidth it's wasted the resources and it's a security risk the passive interface stops the routing updates out of the speci specified interface the network that specified interface belonging into is still advertised in routing updates that are sent out other interfaces should be configured on interfaces which do not connect to other RIP routers. So to configure a passive interface, uh, now have a look at this slide. For example, we do want to send updates out of the uh, next uh, uh, or out of S000 interface towards router 2, but we don't have any routers configured on G00 or no neighbors that would be there. So we go to the global configuration mode and type router rip. So we are inside the router configuration mode and then we type passive interface G00. So that interface, on that interface, we are not gonna send any updates. We are still gonna advertise this, in, this network to other neighbors or to uh, out of the interface, interface S000, but we're not gonna send that way. Now there's a command called passive interface default. So you can make every interface as a passive, but then you have to make sure that you go to the interface and say, no passive interface, for example, S000. That would be more recommended because if you enable like loopbacks or if you have a lot of interfaces, you don't have to go to every interface and say passive interface this, passive interface this. Just about say passive hyphen interface default. And then no passive interface S000, for example. Now when we when we run the commands again, show IP protocols and beginning we want to see only from default and so on so begin from default now we can see that we are sending and receiving RIP version 2 only and we send <coughs> updates the same networks as before but this time our passive interface is gigabit ethernet 0 forward slash 0 propagating a default route default route is like last resort so the router when it receives a packet it reads the destination and then he has he tries to match the destination on the routing table. If there's no match, then the router will just throw that packet. But if there's a default route, it's like last gateway, last resource. So it's like gateway to the router. So it's okay, well, there's no match on my routing table, so let me just send it to my default gateway, a last resource. So for example, uh, say, imagine the router one has got connection to the internet and now it needs, uh, if this router three, for example, if wants to go to, say network on the internet 1111 or 1114 or whatever now router 3 doesn't know doesn't have that on the routing table but if you can have a default gateway which says okay well my default gateway is router 1 so router 2 and then from 2 to 1 towards the internet then i'll just forward it if it doesn't match on my routing table i'll just forward it towards router 1. it is common to configure default static route on the edge router and then propagating the default route through the routing domain using the routing protocol. So we configure a static route from R1 towards the internet, and then we update our routing other routers through the routing protocol. Otherwise, you would have to individually configure a default static route on all the in routers. So you will have to configure router 2 static route default towards router 1, and router 3 default towards router 2. No, you don't want to do that. You want to do static route from R1 to the internet, and then propagate that to, through router rip so they will know who's the default gateway. Edge router must be configured with default static route and remember IP route, that's how we start configuring static route. And first four zeros says any, any destination network, next four zeros, so space here, any subnet mask, and then we can say either exit interface, which will be S001, or next hop IP address or the neighbor's IP address. And then we have to propagate the other to other routers using RIP. So for example, we go to the router RIP configuration mode and we say default hyphen information originate. That's it. So you have to have a static route and you have to advertise this on the RIP. Now in IPv6, we don't have to actually configure router RIP. Uh, after the, our configuration, we don't have to type network. You know, in IPv6, we get rid of these network commands we have to identify in the specific interface 
So net, no network command with root or rip. Interface configuration command. So we have to go to the in each individual config interface and configure it with IPv6 rip. Give it the main name, whatever your rip enable name is it, and type enable. So for example, you go to the each interface and you write this command. So first, IPv6 by default, Unicast routing is not enabled, so you have to go there and enable the command. It's in global configuration mode, IPv6, Unicast hyphen routing. Then you go to the interface. So in the in individual interface, you say interface gigabit 00, for example, and say IPv6, rip, rip hyphen AS, enable. So this is the name of the rip that we have chosen, rip hyphen AS. And then we go to the other interface and we type the same thing. That's how we enable rip 5v6. Examine the rip configuration, show IP protocols. We can see that rip routing protocol, IPv6 routing protocol is rip. And the name we have given is rip hyphen AS. The interfaces are serial 000 and gigabit 000. Show IPv6 root rip. So we can see that now we want to see only the rip learn routes so we can see that we have learned three routes from our neighbors same as before we have learned about 2001 db8 calf 2 so 2001 uh, if i just highlight it 2001 db8 calf 2 this is our one network and that's the network here and now we can see that this is administrative distance is same 120 but it's two hops away because in RIP version 6, in IPv6, RIP NG does use itself as one hop. So when Router 2 advertises it, even if it's directly connected, it'll add one hop away. So as far as RIP version 2 is two hops. So RIP from R2, even though it's directly connected, in RIP version 2, for example, it says only zero hops away. But in IPv6, RIP NG, it's two hops because it does include itself as a hop. And same goes for the network down here, this network here, A002. So it's here and two hops away. And the network down here from router three is three hops away because obviously it's coming from router three. R3, one hop, R2 will add another hop, and R1 will add another hop. Thank you very much for watching this section, 7.3, RIP and RIP NG routing. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astro Krasnichi. Next video, 7.4 Link State Dynamic Routing. Bye bye.